coming to the heart for Antonio Agnes. Today is the 19th Sunday of ordinary time. First reading, First Kings chapter 19, verse 4 to 8. Second reading, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 uh, to chapter 5, verse 2. Gospel reading, John chapter 6, verses 41 to 51. Friends, we hear in today's first reading, after a day's journey, sitting under a bear's bush, Elijah wished he were dead, and he said, O Lord, I have had enough, take my life. O Lord, I have had enough. Friend, these are difficult words because they come at a time and when this man of God, Elijah, a prophet, wanted to give up. It's interesting that a man of God, a prophet, can go through his difficult moments. We all have our difficult moments. Priests, religious, bishops, name them. Friends, this is a spiritual dryness in the life of the prophet Elijah. He felt that he had come to the end of the road. He wanted to give up. My friends, is that not how you all feel at least one day or the other? And we feel that this situation we are going through, we are come to the end of the road. There's no way out. And like in this prophet, don't we all say to God sometimes, God, I have had enough. God, I have had enough. Enough with this. Take my life. You see, some sicknesses, uh, some diseases and sufferings can make me speak this way to God. When there is no healing coming, but the suffering is increasing, the pain is increasing, you might be tempted to say, God, it is enough. Just take my life. Friends, when you all go through difficult moments like this in the families, in our marriages, at our workplaces, and you want to give up, we remember today the story of this man of God, Elijah. You are not alone. Even men of God go through dryness in life, pains in their lives. My friends, when Elijah was talking about dying, let me die, look at the words that he gets from God through his angel. Get up and eat. Twice. Get up and eat. You see, the words get up are words for a living person. It's only a person who is alive that can stand on his feet. So get up means that, look, Elijah, you are not dying. You will not die. You are alive. Get up. Maybe you need these words for today. Get up. Yes, get up. Because when you are up on your feet, you are alive. It's only the dead that cannot rise, friends. They are always down there. And so when the angel of God said to this man, get up, he was telling him that God says, no, Elijah, you are not dying from this sickness. You are not dying from this marriage. You are not dying from this situation. There is life for you eat. You see, now he has eat. And again, again, only those who are alive can eat. So, get up, receive your life and eat. Continue living. You see, the day we stop eating uh, is the time we are preparing for our death. When you are dying, you can't eat. So, get up and eat means that, look, you are not dying, Elijah, and I want to tell that you will live, you continue to live so you can eat. God is giving you back your life. You feel that your life is edging up, your life is finishing. Today, God is telling that he is giving back your life. And then beautifully we hear that after eating, he walked 40 days and 40 nights without getting tired to the mountain of God. Friends, which food on earth? Which food can we eat and walk for 40 days and 40 nights? Obviously, the answer is that only a spiritual food can give this answer. You know, in the culture, when somebody calls for um, communion at home, and it's better sick or uh, bedridden, and the priest goes to him or her to give him or her communion, we call it the viaticum. Viaticum is a Latin word. It means like a... Along the way, you know, carry me along the way, with you along the way. You see, the Holy Communion we receive at Mass, friends, is a viaticum. It is a food for the journey. That's the meaning of viaticum, you know, food for the journey. 
there to come. It is the food for which journey they journey to God. See, when this man, prophet of God, Elijah, ate this food, the food for the journey, he finished the journey. So today, Jesus reminds us that, look, this food for the journey is the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Communion we receive. See, I am the bread of heaven. So, this bread that the prophet ate is indeed a living bread. Thank God, friends, in the gospel reading we hear that these um, Jews we hear were saying, look, but we know you. Are you not Jesus, the son of Joseph? And is your mother and father not known to us? You see, the challenge is that they are saying, Jesus, you are too common. You are a common man. You see, you are too common. It's called familiarity, obviously. Familiarity can push somebody away from your life. But the beauty of this commonness of Jesus is that, friends, by saying that we know you, we know your family, we know your parents, you are too common, that is the answer to what we need in this life. God is too common, friends. God is so, so common to the extent that the poor can have access to him. The rich, the young, the old, men, women, see, all class of people. He is so common that he can be found anywhere and everywhere. And that's why Jesus talks about, I am the bread of life. You see, he doesn't use any other food, but just bread. The common man's food is what? Bread. And the rich man's food is bread. Interesting. Rich men still eat bread. Just as the poorest man on the earth, on the earth also eats bread. See, God is so common that he, won't, he wouldn't give us an excuse to say that because I'm not rich, God, I can't make it to heaven. No. It is not an issue of buying, friends. It's our salvation. It's a gift. See, the Holy Communion we receive at every Mass is a gift. That's what we don't pay. When you go to Mass, you don't pay to receive communion. It is a gift. The rich, the poor, young women, children, we all have access to it, friends. Because they say, Jesus, you are common. We know your family. And that is him. The Holy Eucharist received, that bread of heaven is so common that it is taken everywhere in the world. Everybody has access to it. We pray, friend, because when you keep eating the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion, the temptation is that because he's so common, every week some of us eat, even some every day, we might take him for granted and might not give him the respect he needs. You see, Paul tells us in the second reading that we have to give respect to this communion we receive. He mentioned things that we should do. Forgiveness of sins, the other people being charitable. That's a way out, friends. But friends, again, this gospel from Jesus reminds us that your God is so, so close to you. The next time we stand in that communion line to go to him for communion, to receive him, know that you are going to taste indeed and see. And that's why the response from Psalm says, taste and see. The Lord is good. See, God is not um, a book to read, to be read. You see, God is not an idea. He is not a thinking. He is not a philosophy that you go to the library and go and learn about him. Taste and see, which means that, friends, you need that contact. Taste. If you don't taste, you didn't see that God is good. Are you tasting God? Are you tasting God? Friends, that's why every Sunday we go for Mass, and time we go for Mass, we take communion. We are tasting this man of God, this God. We taste him every Sunday. And our lives change. We see difference in our lives. So we are tasting him every day, every week. That is a challenge, friends. We can't keep tasting God every Sunday, Sunday in, Sunday out. And then we are the same. We must also change. Yes, we are tasting him. He must also taste our lives and change our lives. Indeed, we taste him here because in heaven we shall not taste him again. We shall have him fully. But till then, we shall keep tasting this God in Holy Communion. Every Sunday, we shall be tasting him. See, when you taste something, you are not enjoying it fully. You only taste it because you hope to enjoy the thing later. So, our Holy Communion is a tasting of God. Hoping that one day when we arrive in heaven, we shall enjoy him fully, fully is a word. This is so beautiful, friends. So we pray that when we approach the Holy Communion, we shall know that indeed 
If we are tasting the food that we shall eat one day, when we are in heaven God, so let us taste well, and we shall indeed see the goodness of the Lord, that God is good. Let us pray. God our Father, thank you for the bread of life, the bread of heaven, the food of angels that you give us every Sunday at Mass. Father, we are human beings, and yet you give us angels' food, food that is prepared in heaven at Mass. When we take this food of heaven, the food of angels, Lord, give us the grace to live as much as possible. Like those up there, we do in heaven, like the angels. It's difficult, but Lord, with your grace, we shall try. We shall try. With your grace, we shall do our best. Please help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.